This is Robert Kraft, and I'm your editor-in-chief of StockNewsNow.com. And today on this Wall Street View, we have Alan Brockstein from New Cannabis Ventures and 420 Investor. Alan, welcome back. Hey, thanks, Robert. It's great to have you back on, and uh, you know a lot of news that uh, <laughs> that's come out today. So uh, we, you know we we really wanted to get your perspective on everything. But but first, for those who don't know you, what's your background, and uh, tell us a little bit about New Cannabis Ventures and 420 Investor. Yeah, sure. Just very briefly, my, I've been following the space uh, almost five years since early 2013. Uh, next month, we'll make it a full five years, and uh, I was one of the first financial analysts. Uh, uh, you know, professional investors, let's call them, to focus on the space. And uh, so what I've done over the last five years is that I started 420 Investor, which is uh, a little bit over 800 people now who are uh, interested in publicly traded stocks. It's a subscription-based service with a lot of features to it. But, you know, people sign up to get my take on things, news alerts. Like today, I was very timely. We can talk about that later. Model portfolios, things like that. And then... Uh, uh, I evolved from that and started, uh, you know, so that's a behind the paywall thing. People pay to be a member of that. Uh, but I, I wanted to do a better job of uh, re having bigger reach and connecting kind of the real cannabis industry with the real investors. That was the ultimate goal. And I launched uh, New Cannabis Ventures a little bit over two years ago with my partner who's based in New York. And uh, it's just the two of us. And uh, it's it's been phenomenal, Bobby. We uh, have... Uh, in those two years, we've kind of earned a spot as, as being a very reliable source of information. And we really save people time. Uh, there's a lot of news out there uh, about the cannabis industry. A lot of it's fluff. We don't have fluff. Uh, no fake news on our site. <laughs> so to get to the, the timely news going on today, uh, for those of you that didn't see, uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, just came out that he will be scaling back some of the Obama era rules. You know, so Alan, for those again who may not be aware of these rules that Obama put into place to make it for cannabis to be legal, you know, what what's going on here? What what happened this morning? Yep. So, uh, like I said, I, it was about five years ago that I entered the space, and one of my first observations was just how strange it was that you had Colorado and Washington state voters approve legalization but they nobody could move forward because the federal government hadn't said a word from november 2012 until they finally finally uh the obama administration through eric holder uh who's the head of the doj at the time uh he they issued something called the coal memorandum and uh coal's actually a person who wrote it and there were some other memos before that but this was a very specific document that listed eight rules. The key ones that stood out to me were, well, I remember one that was kind of silly, but the two of them were very important. It has to stay out of the hands of kids and it can't be transported across state lines. But then there were six other rules. The one that was kind of silly was, and oh, by the way, nobody can get high in, in federal parks on federal land. <laughs> so, But basically what this allowed to happen was it allowed the entrepreneurs to move forward in their plans and allowed investors to have a little bit of confidence. And so it, it wasn't the only thing, but it was definitely the underpinning of uh, state legal cannabis. And uh, so this is, a, is in case nobody, uh, in case somebody didn't pick up on it, this was an executive order and it was not a law. Federal, the federal government still considers cannabis illegal, yet we have a huge industry developing state by state uh, as long as these rules were followed. Now, you fast forward to 2016, the election came, Donald Trump, uh, loss of the Democrat-controlled Senate, questions came up. I warned people the night of the election, like, yeah, we got a risk factor here. And then in February, Sean Spicer kind of hinted uh, that there might be something brewing, which was not the case, but it really killed cannabis stocks and worried people in the industry greatly because, you know, if you take away this underpinning, uh, it's a problem. Well, today it happened. And so the coal memo has been rescinded. Uh, this is a, I don't want to call it a worst case, but I'm sitting here looking at this one page document and uh, it's very clear. The new rules are this. Cannabis is federally illegal and any uh, attorney general in a state is uh, permitted to go after a cannabis company. So now, 
worst case will be if they start to actually go after cannabis companies. We, we don't know yet if, if there's plans for that. Uh, that is the worst case. And so this has wreaked havoc today. Uh, cannabis stocks are down pretty much from you know, 10 to 30 percent across the board. And uh, that's kind of where we are. That's the U.S. stocks. The Canadian stocks were all down uh, more than 10 percent, but they're down single digits now, Bobby. Mm -hmm. So what does this then mean? I mean, you already alluded to this a little bit for, for issuers. So, you know, uh, how, how do they how do issuers handle this type of news? You know, yep. are there certain ones more affected than others? Like, obviously, you know, the ones that deal directly with flour versus, let's say, services. You know, how does that work? Yeah. Out? Well, so look, I'm a service provider too, so I have to make sure I understand this question. <laughs> the, sure. I, I would be very careful as, as an investor, especially, or as an issuer, just kind of trying to draw these lines. This is uh, something that I've been scratching my head over for the last five years, uh, and, and it, you can spend a lot of time trying to really figure it out. But uh, for instance, is a utility company that provides power to a Colorado-based cultivator you know, are they a money launderer? Is Alan Brockstein a money launderer? These are very real questions. So, yes, you can try to delineate and say, well, the guy actually growing and selling the cannabis is worse than the guy making the packaging or what have you. But and, and in the end, it's going to make it hard for everybody if if things play out the way Jeff Sessions would like them to. And so I, I'd like to interject here and suggest that perhaps this is exactly what Jeff Sessions said would happen, which was the only smart thing I heard the man say when I listened to his testimony, which was this. Fed, uh, cannabis is federally illegal. If Congress doesn't want these laws enforced, they should change the laws. Yes. So I think the way this will play out, and uh, this is not a buy signal for today because there's going to be some time required and uncertainty. But I think we're going to get some sanity. Instead of having an industry built upon an executive order, there there will be federal rules uh, regarding certain aspects, I think. And it's going to take some time to play out, maybe maybe a year. I don't know. Uh, let me throw out another alternative that Donald Trump uh, happens to notice what's going on and says, what the heck? This is anti-jobs, anti-states rights, uh, and there are a lot of Republicans that are upset already about this. So uh, I don't think the story's over here, but as far as issuers go in the in the interim, while there's all this uncertainty, uh, it's going to make it hard to raise capital, unfortunately, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, I'm pretty sure I, I saw you write this, and forgive me if uh, I'm misattributing, but, you know, it's, uh, I, I think you said something along the lines of, you know, it's very difficult to take something that's unregulated and make it regulated. You know, and uh, it's been a process, to say the least. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I said that or not. I say so many things I can't even remember what I had for dinner last night. But, uh, the, uh, no, I mean, it, it's, this is a tough, a really tough situation because uh, I guess the best analogy is two steps forward, one step back. And, uh, gosh, I hope we don't take a step back to 1980, just say no, raids and all that. I just don't think the U.S. Uh, voters want that at all. I mean, something like 90 to 92 percent of the electorate favors medical cannabis. And so uh, what I've been telling my subscribers over the last year is if I could envision there were certain things that I envisioned happening. And one of them uh, was that they would revise this memo uh, and just make it a little bit more stringent. Mm -hmm. OK, then a worst case that I saw was uh uh, obviously, there is a worse, worse case, but the worst one that I envisioned was uh, that they would uh, uh, somehow do away with uh, what we call recreational or uh, adult use cannabis, but leave medical cannabis alone. But if you read the memo today, it's not clear what's going to happen. Uh, it, there's no distinct distinction made at all. Now, I've heard Donald Trump himself make a distinction, and I, I don't even think that's a very good distinction, by the way. Uh, but in a lot of people's minds, uh, this is a medically important uh, industry, uh, health and wellness, things like that. And uh, it'd be really hard to tell people, especially with all this stuff going on with opioids and all that, that nope, nope, sorry, it's all federally illegal. So we'll see how it all plays out. But uh, yes, it's, it, it can be very difficult moving from black 
to white and there's a lot of you know we're not the only country having problems with this process even canada which is way ahead of us is definitely having some problems with the transition mm -hmm. and and you know just to kind of close out here is uh you know going into to 2018 i mean uh, you know before this big news broke and, and, you know, I'm out in California. Every, it was all legalized. You know, I have friends that are in the industry. You know, they're saying how crazy this week was going to be. You know, so going into eight, 2018, you know, again, before this news came out, you know, what, what were some of the trends that you were looking at and how has that all kind of flipped itself on, uh, on its head? Yeah. So, uh, like I said, I showed up in 2013. I was certainly not an expert in penny stocks, which is where most of the cannabis sector trades. And this is pre-Canada, really. And we had this mother of all rallies when Colorado legalized. And, and I was caught off guard. I, I couldn't even imagine what actually played out. And so I, I was left being overly cautious, uh, not performing as well as the market. Uh, I looked kind of stupid, maybe. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I was I was warning people about how crazy it was. And then, sure enough, we went into a 23-month bear market after that. Uh, the, la the, the last rally was around the election time. And probably on my uh, list of best achievements in my life, I will never leave this off, that I called that rally from start to finish about as perfectly as one could. So I, I really put a lot of time and thought into uh, this next rally, which uh, I had predicted would start in mid-December. Uh, I was thrown for a little bit of a loop because this Constellation Canopy Growth deal that was announced in October really lit a fire on the entire market. And I think it accelerated what I had expected to play out. But, but if you just look at what I was saying back around Labor Day, and uh, I said that from December 11th, we would see this massive rally. And in fact, through last night, the market was up 90%, even after having rallied uh, over 50% off the lows. And if you look at my index as of last night, it was up more than 3x uh, off of the lows. So uh, things did play out. Uh, I, I did expect, and it still may play out, that this rally goes to my expected finish. It's been cut short uh, from when I expected, which was mid-February, but it kind of reached the levels I thought it would reach. And when you ask kind of what was going on, this was a feeding frenzy way bigger than a year ago, way bigger, and just a ton of money uh, flowing into the sector, a lot of speculative money. I mean, part of it is because, you know, people have had success speculating in, in cryptocurrencies and the overall market's been buoyant and all that. So it's been a great environment. So you know, now, unfortunately, we have a lot of people that have piled into these companies, a lot of them that are literally worth zero, yet these stocks have gone up 20x, have market caps of 100 million or something like that. And, and these are, are really in trouble right now. So uh, if, to your listeners, if you're in some company and you don't even know what they do, but it sounds good because it has cannabis in the, in the ticker, but they don't even file with the SEC, you, you better check what you're doing. But I think... Uh, this is going to be a great opportunity for people who believe in the longer term industry uh, to get uh, positioned here, Bobby. Mm -hmm. And Alan, for full disclosure, are you an investor in uh, Constellation and the deal you said a little earlier? In Canopy? No. As a matter of fact, uh, every time you ask me this, and I, and I don't mind repeating it, but I, for your audience, I'm going to give the same answer. I've never invested in a cannabis stock. I like to, uh, I don't like to front run people. I give trade alerts, and the last thing I'm going to do is put something in my portfolio and then tell other people to buy it. So, nope, I play on the sidelines. Gotcha. All right, Alan. So where can uh, my audience go and find more information about New Cannabis Ventures and 420 Investor? Uh, so uh, the best place is uh, new, to go to the website, and then you can find out all sorts of ways to follow New Cannabis Ventures, whether it's our app, which is just amazing. We have uh, literally over 100,000 downloads on that, but uh, that's New Cannabis Ventures with an S on the end, dot com. And then uh, 420 Investors, uh, 420, 420, Investor, singular, dot com, 420 Investor, dot com. Alan, it's always a pleasure getting your insight and uh, wishing you a very happy new year and, and prosperous 2018. You too, to you and your family and, and, and co-workers as well, Bobby. Thank you.